I got a little bit uh, more settled up with the Grizzly. I've abandoned the caster base uh, for the time being, probably for long term actually. This is a very bad floor, it's suspended, it's not very stiff. So I got this uh, one inch piece of wood underneath and uh, I bolted down through that into the floor. I wouldn't say it's solid solid but uh, I can get a bit of movement if I give it a good shove but otherwise it's pretty firm, better than I had before. So I'm just finishing another test cut on a chunk of aluminum here. Uh, the light isn't ideal, very temporary. I had an idea from a website mikesworkshop.com and he had bought some he bought a couple of rings of angel eyes which uh, it's a circle of LEDs he put them in a little holder put them round outside the spindle and then so they're only 12 volts so it'll need a battery or something but or a little power supply and that should flood the work area with light which is better than what I've got at the moment. Not the best angle to see anything there actually. Should have had the camera the other side. Actually, that's a better angle. I've got to uh, set the shop back up just down below where the camera is. I'm not using air on this at the moment because I try to spread the chips all over the place. This is very much trial. Let's see what happens. That cut on there, by the way, was done ages ago on the drill press. Not very good. Um, this one doesn't look too bad. I was running at 650. Not a particularly fast feed. Of course, it'd be very nice to have power feed. All the things that are in mine now, of course, and mine's going crazy. So, uh, power feed, CNC, belt drive, goodness knows what. YouTube's overflowing with uh, videos on this machine. Anyway, for the time being, we'll just try and get used to it. You'll probably see the pattern on there. I stopped and started. I've been messing around with various things. It's a 3 8 four, four flute cutter, by the way. I think I said 650 RPM. I wasn't going at a hell of a rate. Anyway, a lot of things yet to uh, try further. Incidentally, running in a, a 3 8 collet, one of the set, inexpensive, obtained with the machine or bought separately. Uh, run out on this one seems pretty minuscule, so that's uh, quite a relief. Oh, and the, uh, the drill chuck. The drill chuck that actually runs fairly good except when it's rotating when it's rotating this area and the outer section seems to have a slight wobble but that doesn't really matter too much because what comes out of here is probably running I suppose a couple of thousand something like that which uh, is probably acceptable for uh, most drilling operations I expect Still messing about a bit with the uh, fine feed on the quill. Quite useful. It uh, makes it nice and easy to dial in just little bits and pieces. 
one slightly minor annoyance the uh, spindle the hole here is a five millimeter and the pin supplied pin wobble wobble don't like that so I shall always probably find a piece of hardened material and get something that's a close fit without being too tight the apparent weak spot on these machines is the uh, of the two gears for high low apparently they don't last as well as they perhaps might that's what makes me think of doing a belt drive modification eventually yeah most of the extras for this machine it's all down to finance so maybe some modifications in the future anyway I just opened this uh, box up let's try again see if I can get this out one-handed this is the uh, Shah's two inch uh, boring head overall pretty good value get a lot of uh, boring bars with it main criticism is the uh, uh, there's a little bit of backlash in the dial so I think for setting up once you've got the starting cut it's a case of tightening the gib screws just enough so you go just in one direction I suppose it's not much different from what you do on your cross slide on the lathe take up your backlash and then advance in the one direction otherwise um, yet to try that but when it comes to being on a tight budget and having something to use that's adequate as against highly expensive and super, I'd rather have something than nothing. One other little gripe, and it applies to a lot of Chinese stuff. I'm aware it's cold out here. It's probably still just above freezing, but you see that kink in the wire? My God, they use wire that's so stiff you could, I don't know what you could do with it. Use it as a whip. <laughs> that's just an annoyance. Yeah, on the subject of power, I've got to, uh, when I start to get some work done on the ceiling up here. God, this lens must be filthy. Look at the bits. Anyway, I have to put a power supply up there so I can take the power feed up to the ceiling. Anyway, this little fella. Uh, another inexpensive set of milling cutters uh, 10 each, 4 flute and 2 flute and they go up to uh, 3 quarter down to 3 sixteenths whoops, down to 3 sixteenths no idea how long they'll last but it uh, gives me a bit more variety and I've still got a few of these minis. These go back years. <laughs> I think this block was full originally. So I guess there's been a significant attrition rate over the years. But that covers uh, that covers some of the mini sizes. One other item I got actually a little while back. Uh, it's a sort of Christmas present. Uh, quite a lot of feelers it's an import obviously can't afford the top-notch stuff uh, sold from or obtained from uh, allindustrial.com they seem to have quite a lot of stuff so we'll see how this works out not something I shall need very often but now and again should be pretty useful now I've got the mill well that's it for the minute just a little bit of a catch-up really uh, lots more to do lots of practice to get familiar with the machine uh, one or two other odds and ends coming including some T-nuts and clamping devices but uh, getting to the point of doing a serious project operation maybe that's a little way ahead I like to get familiar um, <laughs> the object being not to screw up Anyway, I think that's it for the minute, so 
Uh, I'll get back again soon with something or other. Thanks for watching.